7, verse 7 in the Word of God tonight. We continue our study in this great section of Scripture, one of the great chapters in all of the Bible. As far as the history is concerned, it deals with the last plague that came upon, that God uh, sent upon the nation of uh, Egypt. We're going to read verses 7 down to 13, then verses 21 through 23. I want you to notice a recurring uh, phrase that uh, sounds like this, the blood, the blood. Blood, the blood. Are you ready? Uh, verse number seven. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the, um, the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden as at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the putrids thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in the haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts. And against all of the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13, notice, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Go down to verse 21, please. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that, it is, that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the, uh, at the door of his house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Father, thank you for the reading of your word tonight. May you bless as we talk about, as we think about the precious blood Lord, that uh, is, is in uh, a picture here of what our Savior did for us on Calvary. And as we think about this uh, wonderful story of deliverance, as you brought your people out of Egypt, Lord, may you uh, help us to remember that you can bring us out of whatever it is that we face in life as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so we're continuing. We talked last week about the Passover, what an important uh, feast that was. Uh, one of the most important events in biblical history. It's something the Jews still celebrate even today, uh, each year. And, uh, you know, the Passover always takes place right around Easter time. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> For us. And uh, why is that? Well, because uh, Jesus was our Passover lamb. He's right. the one that died for us, it marks the beginning of the Exodus as the Israelites move out of Egypt from slavery to freedom. As they continue, uh, uh, they, they begin to live by, by God's laws, by God's code, independence upon the Lord rather than independence upon Pharaoh. And so this event uh, began even a new, uh, new day, a new month for them, they said, or a new year uh, began that. So as we look at this chapter, we broke it down into five themes, five great themes you'll find in chapter 12 of the book of Exodus. The first one we looked at last week was what? The Lamb, the Lamb of God. And we talked about that, how, again, that's a picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that Lamb that was slain for us. There had to be a Lamb slain in order for these people to uh, be saved from this judgment that was coming upon the land. And so we had the lamb, and then tonight we're going to look at the blood. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, and there's a, a little bowl to the side there. It's uh, filled with blood, and then there's a, a plant. They call it hyssop, a plant. And uh, it was like a, it was their paintbrush, if you will. And it was what they would use to, uh, to put the blood around the doors on the sides and on the top post of the doors. And then there was also part of the Passover event. There was the meal. They, they shared a meal together, and... Uh, there that we'll see uh, maybe next week. And then, so we had the lamb, the blood, the meal, and then we saw that it was a memorial that was created by this. They were to do this uh, year after year, year after year, as a commemoration, as a memorial. Uh, by the way, that's what they were, Jesus was doing with his disciples at the Last Supper. It was that memorial meal that they were taking part of. And then the fifth great thing, the lamb, the blood, the meal, 
the memorial, and then finally we get to the Exodus where they actually move out and, uh, and are on their way out of Egypt. So let's, uh, we looked again last week, we won't go back through the lamb, how it was uh, a proper lamb, prescribed lamb, a prophetic lamb, and so forth. Uh, but tonight we want to look at the blood, the blood. Did you notice how many times it was used? Verse 7, the blood. Verse 13, the blood, the blood, twice there. Down in verse uh, number 22, it was the blood, the, the blood again. Verse 23, the blood. And so uh, obviously it's an important uh, factor in this. Uh, so, so we did some songs, uh, and I, one of the things I had up here that caused me to think about asking Lori to do it that way was name a, name a song or hymn that mentions the blood. And we got several of them uh, tonight, and, and of course this is not an exhaustive list by any means. But nothing but the blood, there's power in the blood, are you washed in the blood, there is a fountain, the old rugged cross, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, is another one of our great hymns. And can it be, the blood will never lose its power, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we are, right, saved by, I don't know if you ever heard this song, Saved by the Blood of the Crucified One. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. And uh, that, I uh, love, love to say, it's probably not in our hymnal, I don't think. Uh, but it's mentioned, uh, I say, six times there. Uh, overall, the word blood is used 447 times in the King James Version of the Scriptures. So it's a theme that goes, it runs throughout the Scriptures, from Genesis all the way to the book of the Revelation, right? You'll find... The blood is there. It's mentioned over and over. Now, it's used at least three ways in the Scripture. Like this, first of all, it's used in a very literal sense. Uh, uh, that red liquid that flows inside of your body is what? Blood. The blood, right? And uh, the bodies of people and animals uh, that have that within them, and it's what keeps us alive. And uh, if, what happens if you if you bleed out? You're, you're what? Dead. You're dead, right? The, the blood goes, you go. Uh, as well. Now, uh, so we literally, now it's also used in a figurative sense in the scripture. For instance, it says like this, the moon was turned into blood. Now, yeah, literally blood? Or just looked like it was blood red, I think is, is the color. The moon, as it says in Revelation 6, 12, the moon was as blood as they looked upon it. So there was this uh, redness about it that reminded them of the blood, so it was some, somewhat of a figurative sense. But it's also used, of course, very much in Scripture spiritually. And spiritually, God uses the shedding of blood to bring about the forgiveness uh, of sin and to bring and to give life because of the blood. So we're going to talk about a couple of those, the literal uh, blood that's used here in this, in this Scripture that we're looking at. It was the blood that was taken from a, an animal that had been slain, and the blood was used as a, as a sign, the Bible says. That, that, that blood was to be a sign, a token. In verse 13, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And, and God said, And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and, and you'll be free, you'll be saved from that, uh, from that uh, judgment upon the land. So again, in verse 13, notice uh, a couple of things you see in verse 13, that, that, that verse that encapsulates uh, the, the Passover and what that means. First of all, in, that, in this section, in this little story, I, I see God's provision. You know, God made a way for them to escape the judgment. Amen. God made a way for you and I to escape the judgment that would come uh, upon us. And so I see provision as God uh, provided there, and God will provide himself a lamb, and he did. I see a, a promise. There's promise in that verse. Uh, God says, if, if you'll do this, then I promise that I will pass over you. What was it? Well, put the blood up and, and uh, uh, put it on your doorpost and see. So there was a promise there. And then thirdly, there was a protection provided. God said, if you will do what uh, he says to do to the people of Israel, if you'll put the blood on the, on the post of your houses, then he said, I will pass over you. I will protect you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So we see God's provision, his promise, his protection there, all based on the blood. Notice how the lamb is slain. The, the blood is sprinkled. The promise is specified to us in that verse. And the protection is secured by the blood, if you will, uh, that day. And so it was enabled the people to uh, survive this great, great judgment that came upon the land 
uh, that they were in. Uh, when you think of the blood, though, you know, a lot of times we think of blood, we think of death, you know? How many of you don't like to see blood? And he's just like, oh, I'm just not a favorite, you know, and I, I, I had... Uh, I have a doc. I have a, a, one of our daughters as a nurse, and uh, and so uh, you know, she, I guess she must deal with blood sometimes and things like that. Uh, but but I've had others of uh, uh, my daughters who said, oh, I, I can't stand the blood. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna. I don't want to do that, you know, kind of thing. And why? Because we we associate it. To, uh, if you've ever come up upon a, a bad car accident and seen someone, you know, that had been hurt really badly and you know maybe splattered with blood or blood in the in the car or whatever, it it's, it's turns you off, doesn't it? It's like, oh, you know, it's, it's nasty, it's dirty, you know, kind of, and we don't want to touch it, right? Uh, obviously, there are diseases that are that are, come from, from tainted blood and so forth. So many times we think of, the, of death when we think of the blood, but folks, that is not the way the Bible presents the blood. It presents it as life, yes. mm. as life. Yes. Uh, Leviticus 17.11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Even back in the days of Moses, God told them, he, he, you know, he says to them, it's the blood. By the way, he goes back to Abel and Cain. And Cain brought a sacrifice to the land of his fruits and vegetables and things and whatever, but his sacrifice was not accepted by the Lord. It was Abel who brought a sacrifice of the lamb, of, uh, of the animal that God had specified and, uh, you know, that was killed. And so it was through the blood. And so let's think about life, life, the life-giving nature of the blood. Now, of course, we're, again, going to use this in a spiritual sense, uh, tonight, as we think about, uh, alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote, you know, a sacred. a sacred head for such a for sinners such as I, or we used to sing, as such a worm as I. Y'all yeah, remember those words? Okay. Still singing that. One. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the Scripture, in the Scripture, the blood is a vital principle. So write these three, these three things tonight, and, and a couple of words may be new to you, but you know, preachers, they like to alliterate things, and we do that for our sake and your sake, so hopefully it makes it a little uh, easier to remember, but um, obviously we all know what the word vital is. What are, what are your vital signs, right? Okay, that means uh, it, 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 they're, they're the life-giving signs that you're still alive. When, when those things go to zero, and it's like, me. That's not a good sign, amen? That's right. Uh, but, but these are vital to us. It's a vital principle. We cannot do without, we cannot go to God without the blood. We can't uh, be accepted by God without the blood. We cannot be forgiven of our sins without the what? Blood. The blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Hebrews 9, 22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of the blood there is what? No remission. remission. There's no remission of sins without the blood being shed on your, half, on your behalf and mine. Now, secondly, and I'm going to get done way too quick tonight, so I better slow down. Secondly is this. In Scripture, the blood is a, now here's a word, again, you may not be familiar with it, vicarious. It's a vicarious principle. What does that mean, preacher? Well, vicarious means taking the place of another. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he took our, what, our place. He, he died in our stead. He, he uh, bled in, you know, for us. It was, uh, it was, a, it was he, he, he was there. It's, it's like the lamb who was given at uh, Mount Moriah when Abraham and Isaac went up. And, and Isaac had said, uh, Father, you know, we have the, the fire and the wood, but where is the, where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb, you know? Uh, and God will provide himself a lamb. And then right before uh, Abraham was to take the life of his son, there was a ram caught in the thicket, as you remember. And that ram was became a vicarious sacrifice. It was, it was uh, taken, its life was taken in place of Isaac in that sense. And so it is with the Lord Jesus Christ. He took our place. He died for you. He died for me. It was a vicarious sacrifice. Death, and it's a great principle of scripture that 
Our sins can be forgiven because of the death of another. Otherwise, you would have had to die, right? To pay for your sins. The wages of sin is yeah. still death. And so you either had to pay for those sins or, you know, people that never trust Christ as a Savior, they will pay for their own sins. Even though they've already been paid for by Christ, I believe, but if they don't accept that, if they don't receive that, that payment, uh, if they reject it, then they'll pay for their, with, it, with their own eternal death in a place called hell. Hebrews 9, 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, Jesus entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us right. in our place. By the way, we couldn't even get near the Holy of Holies. Amen. <laughs> it took a spotless lamb. It took one who was eternally uh, sinless uh, to be able to go into that uh, place and, and take the blood. Hmm. They say that there was, even though you know the tabernacle down here on earth was a representative of what Moses saw in heaven, God showed him a vision in heaven of what it was going to look like. And they tell me that there's going to be that uh, that holy of holies up in heaven still. And one day we'll, we'll get to see that. But it's a place where Jesus entered and he took with him the blood, his blood that was sacrificed for you and for me, obtaining eternal redemption for you. So it's a vital principle. The blood is throughout Scripture. It's a vicarious principle. And um, this third one, in Scripture, the blood is a... Uh, I don't know how to say this word. Vivify. Vivify, vivify right. That's it, vivify. It, it's like the word vivid. If you think about, uh, you see a picture with uh, what we call vivid colors. That means it's, it's alive. It's, 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 you know, jumps out at you because of the, the vividness of it. And uh, it means to give life to or vigor to. So it's a vivifying principle uh, in Scripture that uh, the blood gives life. And we cannot live without it. Okay? We just can't. Uh, you can't have spiritual life without it. Uh, let's look at the scripture, John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Wow. I sure hope he was talking about that in a spiritual sense, don't you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and and some, some mistakenly uh, think that something else, but uh, certainly what he was talking about you have to receive the blood. You have to receive the fact that he died for you, that he shed that blood for you and for me. So tonight, are you, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Um, let's see, there's a scripture that came to mind. Let me go over and find it here tonight. And uh, it's in 1 John chapter number 1. I think I can find it. Maybe I can find it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, go to 1 John chapter 1. What a great chapter in the Word of God. John starts off this chapter and he says in verse 1, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. What, I, what John's saying is, I was an eyewitness. Mm -hmm. I, I saw him with my own eyes. I, I you know, I, I looked upon him. I, I watched him for those years that John spent with Jesus, John the Apostle. Our hands have handled. We've, we've you know, we've shaken hands before. We've hugged before. We, uh, you know, we've touched him. That's what he's saying. For in verse two, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. He's still speaking about Jesus. Then he says in verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Here's the verse I was thinking about. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
You see, the blood's not just something we talk about that happened. It's just a one-time thing happened 2,000 years ago on a cross someplace. We still need that blood today. We need that blood that covers our sin even when we fail him now. He goes on to explain that in verse 8. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Aren't you glad of that, folks? Amen. 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 What a promise. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, there, in a sense, our sins were already paid for, as we know, years and years and years and years ago, right? But at the same time, we don't lose our salvation when we sin today. We lose our fellowship with God. And to get back in right fellowship, we have to confess sin. And, and again, we're, we're claiming the blood of Jesus to, to, to forgive us and to cleanse us from that unrighteousness in our life, to restore the fellowship that we once had with the Father. He goes on to say, if we, have, if we say that we have not sinned, then we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. You see, we can't say, well, I don't need that. I don't need that. Look at chapter 2, verse 1. My children, these things write unto you that you sin not, obviously. That's, that's the goal as a Christian, right? Is, is to not sin. Uh, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What's that word propitiation mean? <laughs> the, the atonement, the, the in place of, the, the, uh, uh, it, it's what God has, uh, has, has given to us. Uh, it's the atoning sacrifice that Jesus bore in his body, the punishment due us for our sin. And in so doing, he propitiated God. He satisfied God's just demand that sin be punished. Thus, Jesus is both the advocate for sinners mm -hmm. and the sacrifice for their sins all at the same time. So we still need the blood today. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't suggest you go home and get out a paintbrush and, and, and kill the lamb and paint blood on your doorpost, so, I mean, you know, or over your, your door of your house. But can I tell you, you better have the blood on the, on your, the doors of your heart, the doors of your, of your life. We need the blood of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for that blood that was shed for us, that which we commemorate uh, when we have communion, as we had a few weeks ago, Lord, as we think about the, your body and the, and the blood that was that was spilled for us, it was given for us. Lord, let us never forget that uh, we, take, we took the blood of a sacrifice, not just any sacrifice, and even not even the blood of a goat or a lamb or a bull or, or some other animal, but the blood of, the, of your own precious son to atone for the sins of this world. Lord, we claim that blood. We live by that sacrifice that was made. We we know that it brought our eternal salvation, but it also brings us into present righteousness and, and cleanness in your sight as we once again are washed in the blood of the Lamb daily as we confess our sins. And Lord, tonight, just uh, impress upon us the need uh, to, to thank you for that blood, to live by, uh, by claiming the blood of Jesus over our own lives and hearts. Help us to share the good news what Jesus did for us and what he did for the whole world because there was plenty enough atonement. There was enough forgiveness for every person that's ever lived. It's available. But it can be accepted or it can be rejected. So Lord, help us to share the good news with others. And we praise you tonight and ask you to uh, bless as we come to the conclusion of this service in just a moment. And this just a brief invitation, Lord. We ask you to work in our hearts and lives. May we give you thanks for the blood of Jesus tonight. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.